uh, but the Trayvon Martin case, uh, we expect fairly soon uh, the special Florida prosecutor to file a charge, maybe manslaughter, maybe second degree murder against George Zimmerman and the killing of the 17 year old teenager Trayvon Martin. What do you make of all of this? Because it's caused a huge emotional uproar around the country. Well, I think she's got to do uh, what she thinks is professionally right. I think we have to have uh, faith in the criminal justice system. Uh, there will be, I presume, a trial. Uh, the jury will have to look at all the evidence and, make, and render a decision. I think uh, we can talk about it on cable TV forever or on talk radio forever. We don't have a access to the evidence. We don't have access to the witnesses. And I think it's always dangerous to jump to conclusions. I know you were critical of President Obama when he said, uh, I guess a couple of weeks ago, that if he had a son, that son potentially could have looked like Trayvon Martin. Uh, and he was expressing his empathy for the family of Trayvon Martin. And God only knows what they are going through. They lose a 17-year-old son who, in the middle of the NBA All-Star game, goes to a 7-Eleven, buys uh, some Skittles, buys an Arizona iced tea, and is killed on his way back home. But what was wrong uh, with what the president said? My only point was we ought to have equal empathy for every American who gets killed. Now, we've had lots of Americans killed in the last few weeks in a variety of terrible circumstances. Each of them deserves our empathy and our concern, uh, and we should be concerned about every single one of them. Uh, and I think that this particular case has become sort of a national case where the national media can talk about it. But there are tragic cases around the country involving Americans of every ethnic background and of every age uh, and they deserve some real concern, too, and some real effort to understand uh, what happened to them and why. That's, a, that's my only point. Is it appropriate, in your opinion, for a president, and today the Attorney General Eric Holder spoke out about this case as well, is that appropriate? I think that's very dangerous. I, I don't know that they have any more information than you and I do, and I don't know that they are in any better position to render judgment. I think you would hope that the Attorney General of the United States would be in favor of the system of justice. And you would hope that the president, who is a Harvard Law graduate, uh, would be in favor of the system of justice. And I think at some level, uh, you have to believe that the people of Florida uh, and the state of Florida are going to handle this in a serious way. Apparently, this prosecutor is a very serious person. She has a considerable track record. Uh, I'm not a lawyer. She's handled 50 homicides. I'm inclined to, just, to, to rely on her judgment unless there's some overwhelming reason uh, by some other expert to second guess her. And since I'm not an expert, I'm not going to second guess her. When, well, let's get to politics right now. Uh, when Rick Santorum announced yesterday he was dropping out of this race, you tweeted it's now a, a two man race. Uh, yourself and uh, Mitt Romney, you tweeted this it's now a two person race. Donate now to newt.org uh, for the last conservative standing. Uh, you know, everyone else except you. And maybe Ron Paul, I, I suspect not even Ron Paul, thinks it's no longer a two-man race, that Romney has it sewn up. He's way ahead in the delegate count. Uh, now that Santorum is out, he's going to get to that 1,144 delegates needed. Why do you think you still have a chance? You know, it's fascinating to me well, if you say everyone else. Uh, I was in North Carolina yesterday. Not a single person asked me to drop out. And many, many people asked me to stay in. Uh, we've had over 4,200 people go to newt.org and give money since 2 o'clock yesterday uh, and uh, encouraging me to stay in. I was in Philadelphia last night. Not a single person asked me to drop out. A number said they're proud that I was staying in. I've been campaigning in Delaware all, all day today. Not a single person has asked me to drop out. Many have said they're glad I'm staying in. I think it's fascinating that the voters in the states that have not yet voted think it's good to have a contest and the only people who ask me about dropping out are the elite media. So I think this is a Washington, New York fixation. These are often the same people who wanted me to drop out back last June. I didn't do it then. I'm not doing it now. And I'm very happy to be campaigning. And anybody who wants me to continue, I hope they'll go to newt.org and help us. Well, listen to the, uh, the chairman, the leader of the Republican Party, Reince Priebus, uh, after Santorum announced he was dropping out yesterday. He, he, he said this. He said, today, Senator Santorum has made a commendable decision. He has decided to put his country, party, and desire to defeat President Obama ahead of any personal ambition. As you well know, Mr. Speaker, that was seen as a direct reference to you that you, I, I guess he's suggesting that maybe it would be wise if you put yourself the country, the party, uh, ahead of everyone else in order to beat President Obama in November. 
And because it was misinterpreted, Reince Priebus, an old friend of mine, uh, called me uh, to say that it should not be interpreted in any way except as exactly what it said about his effort to be positive about Rick Santorum's decision. And Reince and I have talked clearly about my staying in. I think he's quite happy with my staying in. And he understands that this brings new ideas and new energy to the party. Uh, and that's been my role for my entire career. Uh, I'm going to continue to talk about things like 250 a gallon gasoline, uh, creating a national debt retirement fund with uh, oil and gas royalties, developing a program that would make us energy independent, developing, I'm here tonight, I'm going to talk at Wesley College about a personal Social Security savings account for young people, much like the Chilean model. Now, if we had that system today, if we'd adopted it in 1983, we'd have 26 I'm sorry, we'd have $16 trillion in savings in those Social Security savings accounts today if we'd adopted it back in 1983. So I'm going to continue doing what I do best, which is talk about big solutions and big approaches. And I'm going to keep campaigning, uh, and we'll see what happens. As you yourself admitted, Governor Romney does not yet have the nomination, despite every effort to get people to concede it. Uh, and I have every right to continue to campaign until he gets a majority. You certainly if he have does every get right. a majority, I'm, I'm not I'll suggesting. Support him. I'm not suggesting you don't have a right to continue, or Ron Paul, for that matter. We're only assessing, given the delegate count. But very quickly, what does it say about your campaign, which has some financial problems, I take it, right now, that a $500 check in Utah from your campaign bounced? Nothing. That check was issued four months ago, and the account that it was issued to was closed in the interim. Uh, when the state finally got around to cashing it, that account was closed. We simply reissued it, and they have the money. Uh, that was entirely a technical error in the banking system and had nothing to do with how much money we had in the bank. Be because it, uh, to, to a lot of people, it makes you look uh, like you're in deep financial trouble. I know no. you're going into debt look, uh, like that. Go ahead. Well, if, I, th I think that the nature of the media is if, if Jerry Ford, who was a great athlete, uh, was, was decided he was a bungler, and Saturday Night Live made him a bungler. Therefore, every time he'd, he slipped, he was bungling, although he was, in fact, a very, very good athlete. The fact is the news media picks up a certain story and reinterprets everything into it. Had they called our office, had anybody asked to verify it, we would have told them the facts uh, because the, the, it's purely a technical mistake. And, and it wasn't on our part. We, I, I, issued this, we issued the check in December. I, you, you, your, your think tank, and I know you've spoken about it often over the years, the Center for Health Transformation, that too has now filed for bankruptcy. I know you must be really sad about that, but what happened here? I, well, I, I am sad about it. These are good people. Uh, and it turned out that once I had left over a year ago, uh, it was very, very hard for them to sustain it. And it's very unfortunate, uh, particularly if Obamacare is repealed, uh, the ideas and the concepts at the Center for Health Transformation, the books they'd written, the material they accumulated, the network they had, would have been very, very valuable. But this is a very hard economy. And what happened to them happens to a lot of small businesses. And because I had been gone for over a year, uh, they simply weren't able to sustain the membership and the momentum that we had while I was there. It was a great operation. They're very good people. Uh, and I feel very sad that it didn't work 